how are you all thank you for joining me in the studio love to see lovely to see you all so nice to see you all again my name is Sharon Hurst and I'm the author of how to draw unicorns they've been a passion of mine since I was a kiddie and today we're going to have a little go at drawing some unicorns and the whole plan is that this should appeal to youngsters and to grown-up youngsters alike so this isn't just specifically for children please don't believe that it's for everybody because older children like to draw unicorns too now for the younger viewers first off and for everybody I want to tell you if you'd like to just watch you don't have to draw along because the video will be available later and you will be able to watch it and bit by bit you can draw with me if you watch it later you can stop it for the more difficult bits and pieces so don't feel that you have to sit here and draw along with me it's not necessary Good morning everybody, I'm seeing the names going up through here, all these lovely people watching you, it's lovely to have you with me, it really is. Before we start, I've got a little story for you. I thought you might like to hear the legend of the unicorn. Now this is just a legend, so it's not something that's written in stone and I'm not telling you something that's truth. This is just the fun about the unicorn story, one of the unicorn stories, there are an awful lot of them actually, a lot. The story says that when Noah built his ark, so we all know the story, that's in the Christian histories, that Noah built an ark and put two of each of the animals on, one male, one female, so that they could sail away and be safe from the great flood. God flooded the earth. And for some reason, we don't really know why, and there are lots of different ideas about why, the unicorn got left behind got left behind it didn't go well needless to say it was very very cross about all of this just really quite angry about it you know what uh, why me and that's fair enough isn't it so the unicorn got in the water and he he swam as hard as he could out to that ark and when he got up to it he let me in let me in let me in and of course Noah and Mrs Noah are saying well you can't come in because we've brought up the drawbridges and you know it's the the ramps are up and you can't come in because it will all be a problem and how will we do that and so this cross and angry unicorn headbutted he headbutted the ark and his horn made a hole in it so what's to be done well, Mrs. Noah, in an absolute flat and panic, went running down to the water line inside the ark, and the first thing she could find was a dog. So she got hold of this poor dog, and she stuffed this doggy's nose in the hole. Stuffed this doggy's nose in the hole. And, you know, that was all right for a little while, but of course, as time went on and the ark carried on... I. Now, let me just say to you, I don't know what happened to the unicorn after that. Nobody said whether he got on or whether he didn't or he went back to, I've got no idea at all. I assume he did get on the ark because otherwise there'd be no such thing as unicorns. And of course there are, aren't there? Anyway, given the fact that this hole got bigger, oops, Mrs. Noah got hold of Mr. Noah and said, you you've got to do something about plugging this hole and he had a dickens of a job i have to say so do you know what she did in the end she got hold of him and she turned him round and she plugged the hole with his bottom she did that's what the legend says that's what it says and so today this is why the myth says this is why dogs have always got cold wet noses stands to reason doesn't it and this is why gentlemen will often go and stand at a fire if you've got a live fire or, you know burning fire in the house or if you've got a grate and, and a heater gentlemen will go and stand you must have seen them do it with their hands behind their back and sort of nestle up with their bottoms next to the radiator or the fire because they've always got cold bottoms there you go so that's the myth of the, of the unicorn. It's a funny one, isn't it? Right, 
Do you fancy having a go at this? We're going to just draw today with some interesting materials. So hang fire for a minute and close your eyes if you don't like the, the camera moving because I'm going to turn it over and turn the studio lights on and we'll have a little drawing session, you and me together, shall we? All right then, let me do that right now. You turn you round. There we are. And that's my drawing board there with our pens and the paper. And I'm going to turn this light on so that it's nice and bright and you'll be able to see everything that you need to see. Okie dokie, right. I am going to be working today with these lovely pens. Bit of colour, so these are Spectrum Noir pens and they're rather exciting because they're brush pens and they are glittery. So I'll show you those when we get to use them, perhaps on a main or something, but they are glittery when you use them. Two colours, one light and one dark. So we'll get to those in a little while. Now the other thing I want to use here, which I absolutely love and adore, this is from a company called, I hope you can see this, Kure Take. And got beautiful beautiful nibs this uh, just you can get the finest finest line to something much wider and it's so easy to go on the paper it's called let's write this down so that you can see Nihon Date I'm going to turn it round look at this side Kabura. Nihon Date Kabura. And it's so beautiful because it's got this soft, soft brush nib here. And you've got the fine, fine nib for working. I, this is a, a particular pen that I hope that I never ever have to do without again in my life. And if it was a person, I would give it its own bedroom with a colour TV and I would cook it my favourite meal, its favourite meals. Because honestly, this brush I don't ever want to be without again, this brush pen. I love it. I love it. So it's a Nihon Date Kabura and it's from a company called Kuritaki. And I hope today that I shall be able to do everything that I need to do and I want to do with this beautiful creation, this lovely thing. So I'll start with the fine point and we're going to have a little think about our youngsters with us first and how do we do something for them that is easy and enjoyable. We will start off everybody just with a U shape. I'm not today going into pencils, let's just be very brave and see if we can do it straight off with a pen. So that's the shape of our unicorn's face. That's the starting point. And then about a third of the way round, we're going to draw a bit of a crescent like that. Okay, so a C, one side and then the other. And then here's another C, just like that. That's his chest, his or her chest. And then all we want to do down here is two straight lines, one there and one there. And then we're going to do another straight line, but we're going to do it at a slight angle. So it's going to just come out a little bit like that. OK, and the reason for that is because if we curve that with another very, very gentle C like that, these will become his or her hooves. And we'll make that instead of just doing a straight line across, let's keep going with this C idea, shall we? And then I'm going to do a C there and a C up through here. And then that gives us his little legs and his body. Make it look a little bit more realistic if we want to by just making that a little bit wider like that. And we have the front of our unicorn. Now his main body behind would be another C. So it's as simple as just doing that, everybody. And that's his tummy, that's his little body behind. And then we have a bottom area, don't we? We've got his rump. 
and that's going to be another C and I'm just going to bring that through to about there so leave a bit of a gap because we need to put the other leg in there and we do exactly what we did here but because it's further away we're going to make it smaller and we're not going to bring it right down to here this leg will be to about there so that gives us distance that take gives us a bit of perspective and then if we bring this one out again like we did these round it off at the bottom and then put the other hoof in there yay look we have a very basic body for our unicorn let's make this leg where would it be it's not going to be here because that would be too widely spaced wouldn't it he'd, he'd look as though he was standing with his legs wide open that's silly so all you would see there is just that little bit of leg because this hoof would be hidden behind this leg so that's all you're going to see okay with this now let's go back to his face and his head and let's do some really exciting eyes shall we nice big eyes. Do some of you like manga? Let's do some big manga eyes like this. And that is another open C. You see what I mean? It's a C shape all the time. And here, like that. And then we're going to do an O in the middle, a bit longer, oval kind of O. Not beautifully round, like that. And that will be the eyes. And a unicorn's horn usually sits just up from the eyes, not in, right in between them, so just up. So look at the tops of the eyes. And there's another C shape there, like that. And then what we'll do is we'll draw the horn. This is a pointy stick, look. Okay, so you've got this triangle shape on top of the C. And to give the idea of maybe the knurled horn, the, the, the curves on the horn, we're just going to go for more C's like that, just like that. There you go. So you have your horn. We'll deal with the ears in a minute. Let's do some other bits and pieces first. I want to come in here and give him his nostrils and all you need to do about that is do a tear shaped one and two. Two tear shapes like that. That's all you need to do. And then I'm going to turn the pen over. So if you've got at home a wider, thicker felt pen, this will be perfect for that. And I'm going to come in here and use this lovely pen to fill in the hooves, like that. And then I want to come up and give him a tail. Is it a him or a her, I wonder? I don't know, you'll have to decide about that. And we'll fill in those nostrils like that. We'll make them black. And now I want to do the tail. And we're going to give him a really swishy tail. So to do that, just come out and flick and flick and flick. So start here at the in the middle of the tail and just flick out like this. I love the noise that makes. And then we just fill it in like that. There we go. So that's giving him quite an exciting tail. And he looks like my cat looks when he's all excited and runs up the garden with his great big fluffy tail. Around the horn, we're going to give him, we're going to start thinking about the mane. And you've got a horse always has this beautiful hair here around the forehead. And this is the forelock. So we're going to come in here and flick it, flick it, flick it. Don't go up too far here because we've got ears to put in. So we're going to do a bit of hair here. And again, if we flick it out, it makes it look as though he's bouncing about and all excited. So that's cool. And now I'm going back to my finer nib. And ears, these are two sort of triangles, but pointy triangles like this, all right? And that's one ear, two ears. And do exactly the same inside, like that and like that. I'm going to fill that in with black too, like this. 
and then the next thing I want to do is to come into the eyes. Now it'd be a lovely thing, wouldn't it, to try and leave some light in those eyes so that we can have a bit of a glint. And to do that, why don't we leave a nice V shape like that, just put a V in, and then leave the V white and just fill in dark like that. And there you have your first cheeky unicorn. Cheeky, cheeky, chappy. Let's move on now and we'll do something a little more complicated. So let's go up the scale to somebody who's a little bit older, shall we? So let's think about our older pupils with us today. And I want to work in two. This now, th I think this one is definitely a little girl. I might be wrong, you tell me. And I'm going to start with a very strange shape W. So I'm going to do this down like that and then up like that. So you see, it's like a W. Or don't tell anybody, it could be a sitting bottom. Look, that could be Mr. Noah, couldn't it? So there you go, that's that W shape there. And then all we want to do from here, so where that curves kind of halfway up that shape there, I just want to come out and do that and the same on this side there. So that is going to be our unicorn's face. And up here, so come up above this line, we're going to do an O and we're going to do another O like that. All right, two circles, done. And then we're back to C's because I want to put a C in there and a C in there, like that. And then how about everybody an O in there and an O in there. Can you see where we're going with this? Look, we're getting a face, aren't we? We're going to echo the shape here of these nostrils. So the same applies here in this space here, one. And in this space here too, two teardrops, look. We've got those teardrop shapes. This unicorn's going to have his legs together. So therefore, from here, I'm going to come straight down here and probably it's the same sort of distance as that. So a little bit longer maybe. So that distance is that distance, okay? And then from here, we're going to come down with one leg here, the other leg, and just bring them in a little bit. And on the ends of his feet, we need to put those lovely hooves, don't we? So back to the C's, everybody. Look, one, and there's the other one. Although having said that, that's almost like an M, isn't it? So okay, let's do an M. That's all right. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to do them flat. I want to just round them off a little bit. It just looks more attractive. That's all, that's all. And having done that, we've now got to think about this body here. Now, you know the Thelwell ponies, maybe you don't. Little fat ponies, small chunky ponies. This is where I want to go with this one. And I'm going to do my, this. do you remember that sort of C shape we did for the body here? I'm going to do the same. I want to come in here and I'm coming from this line here. I think this is probably the plan. And I want to bring that round in a C like that. Okay. And then I'm going to do the leg in the same way that we did the leg back here. One, and then another one here. And the hooves will be the same. There's your C shape. And again, not as low as this. And we'll just round those off too. They're funny looking critters, aren't they? But I think that's half the enjoyment of it, is just enjoying it and making it look dopey. It's fun. The horn again, same applies, come up just above the eyes and there's that C shape. And because we're looking straight at it, we're going to be seeing the same kind of shape, that shape like that, like a high pointy shape. And I want to just come in there and I'm going to curve it, C, C, C and C like that. So that I've got that shape there. Now this little tinker is going to have lots and lots of mane in the same way as this one. I'm going to come over to the thicker pen 
and again from halfway up here I think let's do halfway I want to give this one a really shaggy strange funny haircut and right next to the eye like that then coming round and a bit down the middle like this make it scruffy because I just want this one to be amusing and then through here like that and up again round the eye and that I'm just going to fill in there you go there's that lovely noise again I hope you can hear that on the camera because I love that squeak really really like it so there we have this strange looking little monster look while we're here, let's do the nostril and that one. And then I want to come in and do the hooves. I quite like using colour for this and um, maybe using gold for the hooves and the horn. That always seems to work quite well. Or if you've got some silver paint or silver pencils, that would be nice. So just use what you've got. You don't have to use things just because I am. And then I want to do um, a nice tail. And this one, unlike this, let's do a tail that comes from here. So quite high up that bottom area there, look. And down, and let's just make this a really long tail. This tail's coming down and around here. Like that. And I just want to fill that in. I'm going to leave a few white areas because that might look, make it look as though it's got highlights on it and the light's catching it. So that could be quite fun. There you go. So we've done that. Now let's do the eyes and the ears, just like we did with the previous one. I'm going to drop in. Let's do something different this time. How about another circle in the eyes like that? And I'm going to leave that white. So very different to... Uh, the other one just to show you a different technique and we'll come around here and we'll do that now thought with this one we could make it even more interesting let's put some ears on the poor creature so there we go with our pinched triangle do you see how I bring it to a point to so bring it up and then round and same again and again and then we're going to fill that in and make that dark that. And then how's about, see what I'm doing here, I'm going to take a line up there and I'm going to do a line through here. So it's like a fan without the top on. Okay. And then I want to do another three lines and this time I'm going to come from close here and bring it out and then another one and bring it out and then one out here and they're all in a kind of fan shape here because what I'm going to do is that C <laughs> C C and C it sounds like I'm speaking Spanish doesn't it again try and copy what we've got here so one I'm trying to do this out of your way so that you can see what I'm doing without me leaning on the work and there so we have C, and we have C, and C, and C. So you've given this little critter wings, which is different, isn't it? So we have a flying unicorn. Okay, so that's that done. How about in here we do something quite different? Move it over a teeny bit so that it's easy for me to use it. I want to come in here and we'll do um, a goofy, funny unicorn in here. I want to take, let's start with a U. This time we're going to go for a U. And I want it quite high up the page. So if I imagine my page is divided into thirds, I want it about a third of the way up. Thirds, three, one, two, three, equal pieces thirds and in here I want to do a U so there is a very very droopy U like that 
okay so just a nice U could land up being a jug couldn't it if you put a handle on it okay and then we're going to do the usual thing with the nostrils like this so that's our two teardrops what we're going to do with this one hey ho look how about two teeth one and two and we're not putting them together I want the comedy there I want it to look funny so two teeth separated to make it look amusing and then take this distance and do it again here because what I want to do now is give this creature a very long head and a long face just to make it funny so the same kind of distance up here which is probably about there isn't it you can measure it with your fingers like that and what I want to do here is come out and give him a really strange funny haircut like that I'm leaving that gap because that is going to be my C and my pointy bit there you go my triangle and then that is going to be his horn so I made sure I left that little gap there look at that we've got we're already got a head and the beginnings of our unicorn and as in previously either side of that head we're going to put in our pinched triangle like that so round pinch it and then come out again like that and that's going to be his ears and whilst I'm there I might just as well color those in mightn't I like that and do the same here like that and we'll do the nostrils as well whilst we're around and about up in this area before we move down so that's his head sorted out and what I want to do now is think about the body so same principles as here we want the uh, uh, C there and I want one here like that and I'm keeping all this quite slim and narrow because what I want to do is make him quite sort of long and tall and thin and where we had a U on this one I'm thinking to myself I think I'd like a V in there let's try something different everybody and I'm coming down his legs he's going to have knobbly knees and his legs I want them to be as long as that so that's going to be his legs and halfway between the legs will be his knobbly knees. So somewhere in here, I'm going to have a circle and a circle, spindly legs, all right? And that means I'm going to join the edge of the circle. So there's the edge up to there. And then this comes down here to the edge of that circle, to the edge there and down through here. Okay, job done. So that's his knees. And now we're going to go down to his hooves down here and I think the easiest way to do that everybody is down here draw a triangle rounded triangle like that that will do see that funny shape and another one like that okay so we've got that you see what I'm doing and then we're going to join that up up to here I'm not terribly fussy about this area and I'll, I'll show you why in a minute because we're going to work into that and we're going to give him hairy legs. Hairy legs. Okay, so that's that done. Back to the C again. So we want another, this is his body, this is his tummy. So here we go, that's the C for his tummy. That's him, sorted. And now we need the bottom area. So again, this is another C. So we've got C, C, C. And again, I'm going to stop there so that I can do his leg straight down here. But there we have his chest, his tummy, his bottom. Job done, sorted. And I'm thinking to myself, I want to come down here. We need another knobbly knee here. Now this leg is going to be shorter than this leg. Again, because we're looking at distance. So that's the longer leg. We don't want it that long. We're going to take it up to about here, everybody. All right. So just put the little mark in there and know that that is going to be his hoof there. 
halfway between that we put a knobbly knee and honestly everybody it's not really really important just make it shorter that's all and the knee is halfway between the body and the hoof and then all you've got to do is come down join the dots like that ah but what happens there well we have a little bit of round there and then I'm going to do another knee there bring that down for leg number two well number four isn't it actually there's the other hoof and then here is the other leg okay so that's all right we've done that what we want to do now is come in and give him his tail so again from quite high up on that area there a horse's tail is quite high and let's give him a really spiky interesting tail like this to match his mane like that so it's just lots of jagged imagine you're drawing lightning okay and then the other thing i want to do here is from his legs bottom of his legs if we come in here we can do all these hairy bits on his feet and these are called feathers feathers i want to come in there just draw them in to start with because you'll colour them in a second so draw the feathers on his feet like that and we're going to take our thick pen and I want to come in now and with this what I'd like to show you I'm going to just draw some of it in it makes sense in a minute everybody bear with me because I want to put some of that down there. And then I'm going to take a paintbrush because this particular type of pen is um, a pen that you can use with water. It's not permanent and it means that I can come in and I can even paint with it like this. So if I don't want to draw it and I want to be a little bit more artistic, I can come in and I can paint with my pen. So have a little play with your pens first so that you know whether it's a pen that you can move with water or whether it's a pen that is permanent because they all do different things and they're all exciting in their own way. So this makes this look quite arty and I can come into the areas like his feet and just let the ink just run like that. And if I want to, I can come in with a little more whilst it's still wet and just bleed it in like that. It gives you a completely different effect. If I wanted to give my horse a little bit of shading, it's just a damp brush. And if I rub it up against the ink like that, it will bleed. And then I've got some shading on my horse. So that can be quite a nice thing to do, just using water to run that through like that. This would be quite, quite dark down here, the back legs, because they would be in shadow. So we can pull that through completely with water and make it grey. Just a little bit around the tummy area there. And there'd be some underneath his chin because his little face would cast a shadow and the other thing that cast a shadow of course is up here under the hair so just gently gently I'm just pulling a little bit now if you have paints of course you don't need to fiddle about with this you can go into this with a box of paints and you can add these lovely things for yourself and I just want to put his hooves in I'm going to do a little bit like that just a little bit so that I can come back in with the water and bosh look I can just do that and so that gives the impression that he's got one dark side of his hooves and one light side of his hooves so that is something that you can do with this pen as well it's fun isn't it it's fun 
Now if you like to be a little free, I'm going to tear that off because if I fold it over, it's going to run. I know it will. And I will land up wearing it. Been there, done that, and didn't like it very much. Just to show you if you wanted to be much freer with what you're doing with your artwork, we can come into this going up to um, an older person now, somebody older, more skilled with just lines. Think about a lovely, just a lovely shape and you want movement in, in your work. How about we do a you, this you, looks like a smile. And then from there, on this curve, I'm coming in to hitch slightly down and then up and then round a little bit. Give it a little bit of a knob there and then up and through. So you have a head, job done. Leave it. Then how's about down here? We're coming from where this gap is. So give yourself a gap. So probably that distance again. So that would be about there, wouldn't it? And then coming down a little way, out, and then down, and that's the front leg. This horse is going to be rearing, just rearing up. Imagine the back of the leg there, but we're not seeing it. I'm not worried about that, don't care about that. And I'm looking at this gap here. So come just about where that curve is finished and give yourself that kind of distance. So it's that distance. That is there. That is that. Give yourself that distance. And I want to do a really nice bold C shape. Now another C shape. Come down and then do that. So you've got tummy. Imagine that's going to be his hind leg. That's his knee and he's jumping. So you're here. We need to put in his back. Be difficult to do it like that, to get it all correct and to do it properly. So let's go back up to the head and we're going to put the ear in. I want to hit, leave a gap, just leave a gap. And in here, I'm going to put the ear. And to make him look interested and engaged, point the ear forward. Animals, when they're interested in something and they like you, will bring their ears forward to look at you, to, to, to hear you and to be aware of you. If you put your the ears back, it's usually a sign of them thinking, oh, not sure about this. So bring that ear forward a little bit. And then I want to, just in here, I'm going to bring up my shape for the horn, that's all. Just that, just put that in there, where the forehead would be. That's good. And this ear now gives us the clue to where the back of the head would be. And this neck arches, it comes round, so we're doing a really wide C, and then we're coming in, and then we're doing the C of his bottom, and then we're doing that. So you can see there, we've got movement, we've got this leaping horse, it's there, you can see it. I don't want any details in there, I'm not going to bother with them. But what I will do is take my wider brush pen and here I'm going to introduce, now movement will be really, really accentuated if you have hair and if you put that in and it looks as though it's going whoosh as the animal moves. And this is what we're going to do with this now. We're coming in here and we're going to bring that through and we're going to flick it down here. Don't lose all of your lines because it's the lines that give you the shape and form of the horse. So I just want to bring that through like that. And then here with the tail, we're going to be thinking that's high up on the bottom, remember what I was saying? And then for that, there we are. And just give that all movement. And this is the kind of thing, if you wanted to, you could then come in 
with something like these Spectrum Noir pens. And they, as I say, they've got a lovely brush tip on them and you just, if, you, if it doesn't have ink on the brush, you've just got to give it a little bit of a squeeze. But on here, I can come in there and I can add a bit of colour. It's not enough, so just give it a gentle squeeze. And then all of this moves with water too. So I can come in there with a brush and I can shade some of my horse like this now. I can get hold of the glitter. And this glistens, it glitters. I don't know whether you can see it. But it glistens in the light. And that's what makes it so exciting. And I want to pull that through and I'm going to bring some of my shadow through. When you get to a stage where you have a line that finishes like this, just get hold of it, pull it. it that's what gives you that movement. some colour in his ear. So you've got all that movement going on and I mean if you wanted to you could then get hold of um, a spray bottle and we could spray the bottle over the base of our horse. And that would run. And this, these pens bleed out into all different sort of colours. This you've got this blue in it, and there's a touch of green in there. And I just love the way it does that. So you see, that's quite exciting to do that. Please experiment. Don't be afraid of using different techniques on things that you're you're painting and using, because of course. It also means that with something like this, what happens now if I get hold of salt and I just sprinkle a little bit of salt on there? Will that work? Well, who knows? We can give it a try, can't we? And the salt will give me an effect as well. So that's just plain old boring old kitchen salt. So that's another option. But, you know, sprinkle a bit of powder on there if you've got powder paints and see what happens and just experiment. Now finally, how about we do something elegant? Let's do something elegant. I would like to paint a lady unicorn now and make her very sort of pretty. And let me make sure your paper's where you need it to be. I want you to be able to see it. So something now for the older child like me. <laughs> I would like to start off here with two gorgeous eyes. And I'm just going to do head and shoulders here. And I want to start with two absolutely sumptuous eyes. And I'm going to tilt them. So here we have that shape. And can we possibly try and match it the other side? And you know, that's that's more difficult than you think. And then a little bit of a tear duct there in the corner of the eye. And then I want to come up here and join up to there. So I'll come down this one. See how it's curved here at the bottom? Let's go with that. We'll put an eyelid in, so starting just above the tear duct, so there, not below it, here, I want to drop in a nice eyelid like that. So I'll come down this way this time. I'm doing this a bit cat candy because as I say, I want to be able to um, show you without my hand in the way. That's, that's the great plan here. And then we're going to put in two lovely eyes like that. 
and this highlight thing that we've been doing let's do that too so what we'll do is we'll give her a little bit of a highlight like that all right leave it at that for a minute we'll come back we'll come back from her eyes about here so not right on the edge of the eyes but about there so what's that that's about mm, quarter of the way down the eye we want to come down and I'm just going to do this shape just this So just this lovely curve, that's all. And then we're going to come around here and all I want to do is that, do you remember the W we did? We're going to put in a little gentle W, not a big one, little one, gentle one please, like that. Nostrils the same, so again we're going back to our teardrop shape, like this. Magic, job done, sorted. and. Horses, from their eyes, do have a crease down their nose. There's a very definite crease. And we're just going to introduce a little line down there. That's all just to give it a bit of shape. Now, if you look at that, everybody, you can see the resemblance to a dragon and the way I draw dragons. So just think on. That could be, if you wanted it to be, later on, your starting point for a dragon, couldn't it? Could be. And then what we'll do from here is think about this horn. We'll do that next. Up here, uh, just above the eyes, halfway between, in the middle, do your first C, everybody. There it is. Okay. And then we're going to put in our pointed horn like that. And then we will do this. We'll do that. Now it's worth pointing out here that our horn, we're looking up that horn and we're looking underneath it. If your horn on your unicorn is pointing down, do your C's the other way. Look at the difference this is going to make. If, you, if your unicorn's head is looking down, you would be doing it like that. And this is what tells us whether we're looking up or down. So just curve your C's accordingly. So just think on with that. We need to put some ears in and we need to put this lovely mane in. So where would the ears be? The ears are generally up above the eye, right? So we're looking at there and there, the middle of the ears. So we're going to do that lovely shape again. You know the shape that we've done before. So they sit just above the eye. But do you see what I mean about that, that being quite dragonish at the moment? It's a dragon corn. <laughs> Uni dragon. I don't know. There you go. And we're going to put in that shape there. And then we're going to come in and put her mane in. And I want to bring that from here, cut it across the ears like that and then bring it down and around, curl it. Make her look really elegant and beautiful look. And for here, what we'll do is we'll bring hair down and round and on her forehead like that. So that gives us that shape. And then it makes it easy for us to do that and that. And this will all be made. That's what I was wanting to do with that, just bringing the shape through. And if you curve, when you're doing hair, curve with the outer shape because that's what gives it the flow and makes it look real. So don't, don't draw straight down there, look at the outer shape that you've drawn and then curve round with it. And here, that shape there, follow it. Okay, so that gives you the shape. We're not seeing much of her neck, it doesn't matter, it's not important. But what I do want to do is come in here and I'm thinking about eyelashes. Don't do them all through the eye. I like to just come in on the last third of the eye. So if we divide it into thirds, here I'm going to do a little flick and a flick and a flick and a flick. How about that? And this side, a little flick. 
And we could be really silly and give her one really long one like that. That's up to you. That's up to you. But you see again how that gives it absolute elegance. And I want to come in here and just draw in what's the top of my pen. There it is. That's a bit silly, Sharon, isn't it? I'm going to colour in her ears like this. Just colour that like that. And up through here. And then let's just do her nostrils. Can I do it with this one? Yes, I think I can. And this one here. And I think because I want the control, I'm going to come into her eyes and do this with the thinner nib. So if you've got marker pens, they're perfect for this. You'd be able to do it all with a good marker pen. Whatever you want to do it with. As I say, just experiment with what you've got. Paints, crayons, anything. Absolutely anything. Acrylics, yes, anything. And now I want to come in here with, this is another one of these Spectrum Noir, and I just want to drop in some colour down here. Like that. A little bit round her horn. And that, as I say, is just glistening. It's beautiful. And with a paintbrush. Not too wet this here paintbrush, everybody, just because otherwise it would run everywhere. And I want to just give her a glistening, glittery, beautiful mane. And again, I don't want to colour all of it in. I'm not coming near those eyelashes because I don't want them to bleed. But I want to make this all grey and purple and just look at that. Pull it round and experiment, see what happens. And it glitters and it, it's very good because it does stay glittery. Some paints when they dry, they, they lose that twinkle, but this doesn't. And I just love it. There we are. So you have yourself an elegant unicorn lady unicorn i'm just wondering if i've got any um i know what i'm going to do i know what i'm going to do i've got some paint here and i'm just going to take some blue paint because i want to give her some eyeshadow like that that's it there we are and the other thing i think that i would like to do is thinking about light and shade. If something is on something, it casts a shadow. So her hair is on her ears. So if I come in there and I just drop in a bit of shadow there and some in here, and I'm not painting with color, I'm just picking up the color that's on the paper and using that. And if we imagine maybe that our, have a think about where your light's coming from. So if I imagine my light's coming from this side, that's the sun. That means this side of the horn would be shaded. So just come up and add a bit of shadow. It means that this side of her face, the sun, sunlight would be shining down this side of her face. So therefore, this side of her face would be in a bit of shadow. It's a bit like brusho, isn't it? The way it reacts and behaves. And this hair, because it's on her face, would also cast a shadow like that and there would be shadow underneath her chin where am I going to get that from don't want to disturb that too much well that's easy so if you've got paint in a palette use that I don't have so I'm going to just pick up some paint from my pen I'm not coming right up to that chin because I don't want that to bleed too much You know the creases I was talking about in a horse's face? If you just come down there and add a little bit of shadow down there as well, either side, that's it. That's it. 
it. And you have a pretty unicorn. So, I think my time is done. I will photograph these for you and I will put them on the page. Let me just turn you round for a minute so that I can say goodbye sensibly and properly. For two seconds, I'm just going to whiz the camera round again. Are you all right? That's it. So that I can say to you, thank you so much for joining Search Press to our page and having a look here and joining me for the unicorns don't forget there are plenty more where they came from in the book so if you want to extend your knowledge and and practice further they're there but i'm very grateful to you for joining us thank you for coming along and i'm sure there's lots more to come and did you know search press have got a strip well, i've got the wrong teeth in did you know that search press have got a spring festival coming so keep your eyes open for that because there's going to be oodles and oodles to do and all the details are on the page on the Search Press Arts and Crafts book page. So do go and have a look. But from Sharon Hurst sitting in the studio on a lovely sunny day, thank you very much for joining me. This will all be available on the page for you to go back to later and to work through later. Um, at your own speed that's the important thing if you've got any questions come and find me do come and find me on Sharon Hurst Art and send me your questions and I will answer them for you all right all things unicorn what to feed them how to stable them how to ride them I've got the lot all right then thank you very much everybody for joining me bye bye for now bye